the biggest talking point over the last couple of days continues to be Odell Beckham, the vultures circling around. OBJ, everyone getting in the hot takes. You get a hot take. You get a hot take. Every, even the back. You get three hot takes in the back. Congratulations. So the latest, if you have not been following along here, maybe not. You've moved on to other things, but we haven't. Neither has Troy Aikman. Yeah, Troy Aikman entered the hot take arena, the Fox broadcaster, Hall of Famer Troy Aikman was on his paid radio appearance in Dallas. He gets paid to go on there and bloviate every week. And he was asked about OBJ's debut on Monday Night Football. Aikman questioned Beckham's impact on Matthew Stafford. That was one of the hot takes. And the Rams' offense as a whole, uh, the longtime NFL on Fox analyst with Joe Buck, implying that Matthew Stafford, may already be feeling the pressure to get the ball to Odell Beckham, similar to Baker Mayfield. That's that's Aikman's hot take. So he had two of them. He uh, he talked about uh, Stafford and the offense uh, not being on the same uh, rhythm with Beckham, the locker room chemistry he also tossed out. But there was a lot, a lot to break apart. So let's do that right now. The question, what do you take away? from the Troy Aikman ranting about OBJ and his early impact on the Rams. So I have highlight package, Greek, and eco-friendly. And we'll put all this together, and we're going to make a tuna casserole. Not that I want to eat a tuna casserole, but we're going to make it anyway. All right, now A, Troy Aikman is clearly good at his job. He's kept his job for a long time. But on this take, he missed the bullseye. This was a missed opportunity on the take by Aikman. Now, my theory on this is that Aikman only watched part of the game, but not the entire game. Otherwise, he would not have come to this conclusion. If he had watched the entire game and he came up with this opinion, then his analysis is even worse than I imagined. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt here. It is more probable than not that Aikman flipped on the two-minute highlight package and then formed his opinion on one of the highlight shows, whether it was state-sponsored NFL media or uh, Sports Center or wherever, his premise that Matthew Stafford felt pressure to force the ball to Beckham does not have a leg to stand on if you actually watch the game. In fact, there's zero evidence of Odell demanding the ball from Matthew Stafford. Now, some have implied that by going to the Rams, Odell Beckham uh, let the Rams know, I need to get the ball X number of times. There's no proof of that. In fact, many people think the reason Odell went to the Rams was because of Los Angeles and the party scene, and he can hang out with people from the entertainment industry uh, 24-7 outside of practice and schmooze with LeBron James and all that. That's why... He's in L.A., not necessarily to catch the football for Matthew Stafford. And there's certainly nothing that I can can see, and, and maybe I've missed it, you can, you can educate me, that Matthew Stafford is stressed out about having Beckham on the team. In fact, uh, what we do have direct evidence of is that Odell Beckham, in his debut as a Ram, was a bit player. He was a bit player in his Ram debut. He ran, uh, the, uh, ran a grand total of 11 uh, routes. I believe he was in for 15 plays uh, along that line. He was targeted three times, twice on the opening drive, including the first offensive play. There was that quick pass to Beckham. So Beckham, to say that there was pressure to feed him the ball, uh, if there was, it certainly didn't show up in the game. He was not OBJ, an integral part of the game plan, despite what Troy Aikman said. And when he played... You could say he was either not effective or a decoy at most, very similar to what he had been in Cleveland. The Rams attempted 41 passes with Stafford. They had a gimmick uh, fake field goal pass play, but the 41 passes by Stafford. OBJ was targeted on 7.3% of those passes. What a ball hog! He's ruining the entire Ram offense. Uh, Stafford has a history 
of playing with star players that demand uh, the football quite a bit. And he seemed to work out pretty well back in Detroit with a guy named Calvin Johnson, better known by his nickname Megatron. That worked out pretty well. And uh, they'll, they'll figure this out. I have no doubt that Odell Beckham and Matthew Stafford will figure it out. Now, part B of this, Troy Aikman also insinuated that the Rams' recent acquisition, uh, the acquirement of uh, Von Miller via trade and Odell Beckham via free agent signing, has shaken the team to its bedrock, to its foundation. Uh, Aikman saying that the move uh, used that kind of terminology, the uh, the foundation, the bedrock of the football team. Uh, Troy went on a long rant, uh, Aikman did, about uh, locker room clicks because of new players coming into a team and painted a very bleak picture. So uh, the way I, I heard it, Aikman sounded like a guy who should never acquire good players because good players want the ball, good players want the headlines, and so you should just keep the, the players that you have and don't rock the boat. What a bunch of sports gibberish. You would think Aikman would know better. Uh, after one game in which Vaughn Miller and OBJ played limited duty, we are now led down the garden path here that the Rams season is a burning pile of dirty diapers. That Vaughn and OBJ have caused the entire Sean McVay era to crumble. It is a Greek tragedy, if you believe the hot take artist. I don't consider Aikman a hot take artist, but on this one he was. It's a drama o rama. So take a couple, take a pause, take a couple spe- steps back. What are we doing here? Right? Ultimately, in any athletic endeavor, talent trumps everything else. Talent wins. The Rams are more talented now with Vaughn Miller and Odell Beckham than they were without them. And as has been pointed out, the Odell Beckham argument that he rocked the boat went out the window, which really kills the original hot take that Beck, you know, Odell is going to take the ball away from uh, the other receivers and all that. He was brought in because of the star power, but also as an insurance policy. And it was a combination of all that. And the Rams have already decided they have to pay the deductible on the Odell Beckham insurance policy because Robert Woods injured. He gone uh, out for the year before Odell had even played a game with the Rams. So rather than have to go scramble and get somebody out of the Canadian Football League or somebody delivering packages somewhere, they already had a replacement of a, a pretty good name brand replacement in Odell Beckham. So immediately the insurance worked out. Now the last word here, as and it's not just Aikman. It feels like we're piling on Aikman because he was the loudest voice in the room over the last 24 hours. But this OBJ Ram slander uh, was really unpreventable, right? This, this was inevitable the moment the Rams agreed to contract terms with Beckham. Now, why is that? It goes with the real estate. It goes with the territory. You buy the land, this comes part of the Odell Beckham package. There's a lot of people that cannot handle OBJ. He's the modern T.O. of this generation. And the the first time that the Rams were going to lose a game, which has now happened, or OBJ made some kind of mistake, What do cockroaches do? They crawl out behind the refrigerator in force, and there's a lot of cockroaches following Odell Beckham around. Uh, The Rams are a glamour team. They're a sexy team. Beckham is an agent provocateur. Uh, He is an eco-friendly paper straw that stirs the drink wherever he goes. And just to recap, now last week, in case you were hibernating, we had around-the-clock, breathless coverage on Odell Beckham in free agency, it was relentless. Reports of the biggest names coaching and playing in pro football, doing a mating dance to try to swoon Odell to come to their team. Names like Sean Payton, Russell Wilson, Devontae Adams, and many others. All of them whispering sweet nothings into the ears of Beckham. And then he picked the Rams. The music stopped. The plot twist shifts from OBJ being like a dreamboat because he didn't go to your team. So instead of being a dreamboat, he's a Trojan horse in the blink of an eye. Something is, something's a little off on this. Right? 
all because he changed laundry and didn't pick your team. Now, despite not being a great player, and I said this, I said this when Odell was looking for a team. He hasn't been a great player in several years. He's just a middling guy, but he continues to move the needle. And it's great for what I do in the sports talk radio business. And he continues to be, despite a lack of production, someone who is a fascinating player because he engages a reaction. And if you really want to annoy Odell, if you want to upset Beckham, then what you do is you ignore him. But you can't do it, right? OBJ is famous. At this point, he's famous for being famous. And uh, you're not aloof when it comes to Odell. You, you're you either for him or against him, but you're not in the middle. All right? That's, that's kind of how that works when you look at at Beckham and his uh, career at this particular point in the game. I can't wait for the next over-the-top hot take. After one game so far, the Rams, I guess those will die down now because the Rams don't play, but this weekend they have a bye week, so they will not not lose this weekend. They will not win this weekend, so we have to wait a couple weeks for the next round of OBJ is destroying the Ram horns. Uh, They're now devil horns.